Well, hello there, eTechians. Uh, today we're going to talk about energy formulas, and we're going to work some problems, and I'll tell you a little bit about problem solving technique. Uh, first, I want to review a little bit about what is energy and the different ways energy is stored in the environment, and the different ways that uh, energy can be transferred. Uh, you know, just what we've been doing. And then uh, we're going to develop uh, formulas or equations that tell us exactly how much uh, energy is being transferred or how much energy is being stored. And we're only going to do it for four different uh, ways. We're going we're to come up with a formula for work. Remember, that's when you transfer energy using a force. We're going to come up with a formula for how much energy something has because it's moving and has mass. That's called kinetic energy. Well, I'll show you a formula for elastic potential energy. That's a stretch to compress spring. And also for gravitational potential energy. And then we'll work some problems. And I want you on these problems to use the given, find, and solve uh, technique. Uh, it's, this is the problem solving technique that I use in physics. Uh, it's also what I was taught uh, at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo when I was an engineering major. And it's very simple. Uh, and it works. It really helps you solve problems efficiently. And that's, that's the goal here. So let's begin. Remember uh, what we said about energy. Energy, if you've got energy, you can make change. I'm not talking about quarters, nickels, and dimes here. I'm talking about changing something in the environment. If, if, if you've got energy, that gives you that ability, that capacity to make change. And we said there were uh, various uh, ways that things can have energy. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, kinetic energy. Um, and we're going to abbreviate that from now on. I'm just going to call it KE. And KE, or kinetic energy, is uh, if something's moving, and it has a lot of mass, uh, it can make changes to things if, if it collides with them. Um, then we have uh, elastic potential energy. And we abbreviate that uh, with EPE. -E. OK, and different textbooks um, do it differently. Um, in my physics class, for example, uh, we would call this U sub E. But, um, and, but most of you aren't in my physics class, so it's, it's not a big deal. Um, but hopefully you'll take it next year. But there's different people, different textbooks that use different variables to represent these ideas. And you just have to um, go with it. And um, it's not that difficult. And then we have gravitational potential energy. And we said that gravitational potential energy was, uh, well, uh, I'm sorry, elastic potential energy, if I stretch a rubber band, right, I can fling the rubber band. So when you stretch it, you've, you're putting energy into it, and that energy is stored in that stretch rubber band, and then you shoot the rubber band, it becomes kinetic energy, and all those kinds of things. Um, this is uh, gravitational potential energy, GPE. And that's uh, the energy that's uh, stored up because something has height. So again, imagine somebody's holding a boulder over your head. Uh, that boulder could potentially um, do some damage. If you uh, release it, uh, gravity will pull it down. It will smash into things and uh, make changes. Um, and uh, so these were the, th uh, we, we had uh, also, we had what well, we had thermal energy and so on. Um, we are going to have equations for that when we talk about thermodynamics later on uh, in the year. But for right now, um, we want to develop these uh, equations for these uh, three things. And then we said that there was a, a way of transferring energy. Uh, and we said that work wa uh, was when we transferred energy using a force. 
Now a force is just a push or a pull. And for example, here's a roll of tape. If I a, apply a force to it, okay, I'm transferring energy out of my hand, out of my body, and into the moving tape. Of course, it, it does appear that friction is taking that energy, that kinetic energy away, uh, and dispersing that energy into the random movement of the environment. We're warming up the environment a little bit. Um, so, but anyway, uh, work is uh, is the transfer of energy uh, using a force. So what we want to do now is take these ideas and be able to specifically measure them. You know, what do we mean by them? So uh, let's let's do that. Let's develop our first formula. Is for work and work it turns out is equal to a force times the distance you apply that force now here's that roll of tape I'm going to apply a force to it and I'm going to push that force through some distance right here and if I multiply the two together I'm going to get uh, the work done. Now we have to talk about units and the way we measure um, these things in the metric system. We're going to use the metric system most of the time in this class uh, and the metric system is just awesome. It's superior so it's a good thing to know. Let's talk about force. I think you have a, an inherent idea of force like if you push on something and, and you're, you're probably used to thinking of force in terms of pounds, like pounds of force, like how many pounds of force do you have to apply to lift something up? How much does something weigh, uh, for example, in pounds? But in the metric system, we don't use that unit of force. Uh, we don't use pounds. We use a unit called Newtons, um, named after Sir Isaac Newton. And uh, you'll find that a lot of units, a lot, not all, but a lot of units are named after famous scientists who discovered really great stuff. And Isaac Newton discovered a, a lot of great stuff, and so we named uh, uh, the fundamental unit of force uh, after him. Now, how much is a Newton of force? Well, um, if you uh, pick up your uh, a typical textbook, probably weighs about five to ten newtons. Um, an apple, here's a good way because right, Newton's apple. An apple weighs about a newton. A small, a smallish apple weighs about a newton. Uh, has about a newton of force of gravity pulling on it. So um, it's not a, it's not a, a, a lot of force. It's, it's um, about four and a half, uh, you need about four and a half newtons to make a pound. Um, but I want you to think of it, think of it as a fairly light object but not an insubstantial one, like hold a, a, an apple in your hand and that's about a newton. And then the units for distance we're going to use in the metric system uh, are meters. Okay, and when we multiply, uh, when, if I apply a newton of force through a meter of distance, I've done some work and I have transferred some energy and the, ener the units of energy that we're going to use for right now and there are several different kinds of units for uh, measuring energy like calories or you know BTUs, British Thermal Units and so on but th what we're going to use right now is called the Joule. So um, a Joule is a certain amount of energy. Now how much energy is a joule? Well imagine um, taking an apple and lifting it over your head, about a meter over your head. Um, that apple can do, has about a joule of um, gravitational potential energy, right? So uh, it's not a lot of energy, um, but you know it's this is how we measure it. Now this is named after a scientist named James Prescott Joule. We abbreviate these units, right? 
Uh, the abbreviation for newtons is N. The abbreviation for meters is M, lowercase m. And when you multiply a newton times a meter, you get a joule, capital J. Those are the abbreviations for the units. Now, don't confuse uh, unit abbreviations for variables, because we're going to take this and make a mathematical formula for it. And, well, that's my mother-in-law calling. My wife will get it. So um, we're going to create a formula that's like this. Work equals uh, force times distance. Work equals force times distance. And this is a formula. And the this, this is a variable. This variable stands for work. This F stands for force. This D stands for distance. So th these, this is the formula right here. This is our first formula that we're going to develop today. Um, I want to encourage you to take physics because we go into this in a great deal more detail and you find out why these things are what they are. Okay, but for this, the purposes of this class I'm just going to give you the formulas, and, uh, and then we're going to learn how to use them. So that's work. Now let's talk about kinetic energy. All right, kinetic energy is a measure of <clears throat> how much energy something has because it has mass and it's moving. Well, the formula for it is kinetic energy is equal to one half of an object's mass times the object's velocity squared. It's the velocity squared. One half the mass times the velocity squared. So imagine here we've got a like a, a a car running down the road. Terrible car. But anyway, it has a certain mass, right? And it has a certain velocity, or you can think of it as speed, it doesn't matter for this. And these are the variables we're going to use for mass. We're going to use lowercase m for mass, and we're going to use a kind of a cursive v like that for velocity. And mass is uh, a measure of how much stuff something has. It is related to an object's weight, and we will talk about that later, but mass is a, a measure of, of um, how much stuff, how much matter an object has. And we have a unit for mass, which is the kilogram. Now, I'm, uh, I'm videotaping this lecture at home. I don't have a kilogram mass with me. But um, I'm sure Mr. Kinney or I will, will be holding up a kilogram mass. Even as I speak right now, we're holding up a kilogram mass to show you how much a kilogram is. And it's, it's a pretty good chunk of metal. It's like if you had a big wad of brass or something, you could hold it in your hand. Um, now, uh, in velocity, we measure velocity as a measure of how fast we're going. But we're going to use the, meter, uh, the uh, metric system. And that's in meters per second. That's what we're going to use. Now, of course, there's lots of different units for velocity. <coughs> um, for, for example, the one that you're most fam familiar with is miles per hour, right? But, and there's feet per second, there's meter, you know, well, we're, we're going to use meters per second, kilometers per hour, miles per hour. But in this class, we're going to use meters per second. So the formula for kinetic energy is one half the mass times the velocity squared. Now you have to know what all these letters are representing in order to do this stuff. Okay, but lowercase m represents mass in kilograms. Cursive v represents velocity in meters per second. 
Now notice something here. If we multiply all these units together, the units for it, it's a kilogram times a meter squared per second squared. Now the reason we're using the metric system it, for to, you know for mass and for the velocity is that if you multiply this combination of units together it turns out that this is also equal to one joule a kilogram meter squared per second squared is a joule now we're not going to tell you why it's a joule right now but uh, obviously I, I want to encourage you to take physics because uh, in physics we uh, well, actually, we kind of define the joule this way, but um, you'll see that it's all consistent. Um, a, this is a newton times a meter is a joule. Well, it turns out that a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. And then you multiply that by meter, you get the meter squared. So it, it all stays consistent. It all works together. So this is the formula for kinetic energy. Okay, let's talk about elastic potential energy. And we have a kind of an interesting um, equation for it. Kind of looks like the one for kinetic energy. But if I take a rubber band and I stretch it. Let's see if I have a rubber band in here somewhere. Uh, here's a spring. But anyway, if I take a spring and I stretch it, okay, so there's obviously going to be a distance involved here, right? I'm going to stretch it a certain distance. Um, and um, it also, the, the amount of energy stored in it isn't, doesn't just depend on how much I stretch it or compress it, but also how how springy or stiff this material is. And so those are the two things, the nature of the material, how stiff the material is, and how much you actually stretch or compress the material. So elastic potential energy is going to be equal to one half the stiffness of the spring. Now we have a name for the stiffness of a spring. It's called the spring constant, okay, and uh, and then uh, times the distance stretched. Okay, this is the uh, the distance stretched. Let me squeeze that in like this. Or compressed. You know, you can compress it. Um, but if you think about a rubber band, you, you're just going to stretch that squared. you got to square that. Okay, so let's write that as a formula. One half. Now, we have a variable name for a spring constant. And all the scientists got together and decided to use a lowercase k for spring constant. Okay, so when, if, if I'm going to use a lowercase k uh, from now on, it's going to mean the spring constant, and it measures how stiff, how much f uh, force you have to apply to stretch it one meter. That's, uh, well, we're, we'll get to the units here in a second. Distance stretched, I'm just going to use d like I did for work, squared, one half k d squared. And there's my formula for elastic potential energy. Now let's talk about units here. The spring constant, think of it as how much force do I need to pull on this to get it to stretch one meter? So it's newtons of, newtons of force to stretch one meter. So newtons per meter. Okay, um, and remember we used a capital N for newtons and uh, M for meter. Again, when we were using lowercase m uh, in this formula, right, it stood for mass. But when I use a lowercase m as a unit, it means meters. It's kind of confusing. Sorry, but that's just the way it is. Now, distance is also measured in meters. 
but we're squaring the distance, so this is meters squared. And notice what happens here. What is meters squared divided by meters? See, I'm dividing. Well, think of meters squared as meters times meters divided by a meter. Oh, that goes away. So, oh, look what's left. Newton times a meter. Well, what is a Newton times a meter? It's a joule. And a joule, again, is our unit of measure for energy. So uh, we, get, we, we get joules for elastic potential energy, joules for kinetic energy, and again, joules uh, for work. Newton times a meter is a joule. So it's all going to be joules, including our next formula. And our next formula is Ela not elastic, I'm sorry, gravitational potential energy. Okay, and now think about this one's really pretty easy to imagine gravitational potential energy. Um, well, what did we say it was like? If you know, I'm, I'm, I've used this example several times. Of you know, here's somebody standing here minding their own business, and then somebody holds a bowling ball over their head. Okay, now how much energy does it have compared to this person's head if you were to release it? Well, this ball has height, doesn't it? Well, think about this: gravity pulls this thing down, right? So gravity is pulling this down with a force. And that force is um, uh, going to be applied through this distance. So really, elastic potential energy is the work that gravity can do to pull that object down. It's the work that gravity does when it pulls an object down. So. Um, you can relate this to work. So this is, well, what is this force right here? I'm not going to call it F for force. I'm going to call it, uh, oh, I don't want to do that. Hmm. Well, I, I can do it. Hold on. Weight. But I, I don't want to use W for weight. What is weight? Ah, I know what I'll use. What is weight? Weight is the force of gravity, isn't it? Like, how much do you weigh? Well, I weigh, uh, right now, unfortunately, I weigh 220 pounds, um, uh, which that comes out to be 900 and something Newtons. So we're going to use Newtons. If you multiply your weight by 4.5, you get uh, your weight in pounds, you get Newtons. So we're going to say it's the force of gravity, F sub G. Now, this G is not a variable. It's a subscript that's part of this variable force of gravity times um, our height. Okay. Oh, I was going to write this out in words. Hold on a second. So it's the force of gravity. Okay. Times The height the object is right now you think of the height as the distance that this force of gravity is going to be applied so really this is is kind of an equation it's just like our equation for work so gravitational potential energy is equal to the force of gravity times height okay and that's the formula that we're going to use for uh, gravitational potential energy. Now think about units here. You have to use Newtons. And your height above the ground, or, or actually the height above this guy's head in our example, has to be in meters. Because you, have, you want the units to be Newtons times meters in order to get to joules again. 
So this is all very, very consistent. Okay. So let's um, let's summarize our formulas here uh, and make a, what we call a formula list. Okay, we have work equals force times distance. Kinetic energy equals one half m v squared. Elastic potential energy equals one half the spring constant times the distance squared, the distance that's been stretched or compressed. And then gravitational potential energy is equal to the force of gravity times our height above the ground. So these are the four formulas that you're going to use to solve problems. Now, what you need to do is um, make a list of, of this. And actually, I'm going to make that part of the homework. Um, I'm going to have you, you create what's called a quantity chart for all of these variables. Um, and uh, and that'll be that'll be very very useful to you but now what we want to do is we want to solve some problems using these formulas okay and I'm only going to do about three example problems uh, here um, even though there's four formulas and uh, I think you'll get the hang of it and then you'll be able to do uh, the assigned homework problem so let's do uh, example number one Let's see, a ball, a pass, <laughs> okay, a ball has a mass, I think that's what I was thinking of here, as a ball has a mass of 0 0.25 kilograms and is thrown with a velocity of, oh, let's make it um, fairly easy to do the math. How about 20 meters per second? How much kinetic energy does the ball have? Now, um, I want you to copy down uh, these example problems. Uh, but when you do the homework, you don't have to copy down the problem. What you can do is instead save yourself a little time by using the given, find, and solve uh, format for problem solving. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So here's here's what's given. Now you're going to write. You just have to write the whole word out. Write out the word given. Okay. And um, uh, you know we're going to do this hundreds of times, and people get tired of it. But you just you need to do it. Okay. Now you read the problem carefully. And you look for things that you, quantities that you know about. A ball has a mass of 0.25 kilograms. Well, mass, okay. So I'm going to write M equals 0 0.25 kilograms, okay. And it's thrown with a velocity of 20 meters per second. So I know what that, that's velocity. I know what our variable is there. V equals 20 meters per second. Okay, now that's all I'm given. Now, I want to write down what is it that I want to find? In other words, what question, what quantity are we trying to figure out what it is? And that is how much kinetic energy does the ball have? So we're trying to find kinetic energy. So this, uh, this will, will be written as a variable. This is a variable plus you know what, what it is. And I want you to do that. 
Some students will just go, oh, given 0.25 kilograms. No, no, no. You have to write m equals 0 0.25 kilograms. Some students will write, oh, 20 meters per second is given. No, no, no. V equals 20 meters per second. You must do this. You must write the variable equals what the variable is. The mass equals, you know, m equals, all right? You got to do that, all right, to get full credit on, on this homework. So let's solve. Okay, then um, you do um, uh, what I call uh, shopping for an equation. Um, which of our formulas, or shopping for a formula, which of our formulas applies to what I know and what I'm trying to find? Well, look at our list. And you just go through them. Uh, well, it's not work. I'm not trying to find work. I'm not given work. I'm not given a distance. Uh, well, right there, that's the one we want. It has what's given, and it has what we're trying to find in it. So that's perfect. So I'm going to write Ke is equal to 1 half mv squared. Yes, you have to write down the formula. Equals, now you can plug in your numbers. 1 half the mass, 0 0.25 kilograms times our velocity of uh, 20 meters per second squared. Oh, don't forget to square it. It's very common for students to forget to square velocity when they're calculating kinetic energy. And now you just need to get your calculator out and do it. Um, I don't think you really need a calculator here. Uh, what's 20 times 20? That, that would be 400. 400 divided by 2 is 200. And 200, uh, well, 0.25 is like 1 fourth. So what's 1 fourth of 200? Uh, that would be 50, 50 joules. Then you box your answer. OK. Um, now in this problem, you don't really need to. But usually, I, I want students to you know draw pictures. And, you know, here's the ball, and it's moving. But this one was. The next problem we do, we might actually um, draw a picture of it. Um, so, eh, let's use the back of this paper. Let's do another example. Um, a 100 Newton boulder is perched at the top the top of a 25 meter high cliff. How much gravitational potential energy does it have? Okay. So again, let's do the given find solve thing. So given, and here it is kind of convenient or it's a good technique to actually draw a little sketch. So here's my cliff. And I usually kind of fill it in like this if it, to show that it's a solid surface. So here's my boulder perched at the top of this cliff. And it has, in the force of gravity, it has a weight of 100 newtons. And it has a height of 25 meters. And this is kind of nice. You see how I wrote what's given here? 
uh, I drew a picture of the problem and then I wrote uh, what's given in the problem uh, in the picture. That's that's really a good good thing to do. Uh, now what are we trying to find? Uh, the gravitational potential energy, the GPE. Okay, so now let's solve. Okay, well, gravitational potential energy is equal to the force of gravity or the weight of the object times the height. And again, uh, how did I know that, right? You have to look at this list of formulas that you have and figure out which one applies to the problem. Now, I know this is really obvious right now, but we are going to get to more difficult material. And we're going to have a lot of formulas by the end of the year, and you're going to need to know how to use all of them. So, um, okay, gravitational potential energy is equal to the force of gravity, 100 uh, newtons, and it's going to fall a height of 25 meters. So the gravitational potential energy is um, 100 times 25. And you can just go, OK, 1 times 25 is 25, times 10 times 10 to make it 100. And what's a Newton times a meter? A joule. And there's my answer. So. Let's take a look at, at the technique here. Here's the problem. You write given. And I drew a little picture of it and wrote what was given in terms of the variables. What are you trying to find? And I do it in terms of the variable use, gravitational potential energy. Solve. OK. Now when I solve it, I write the correct formula, plug in the numbers with the units, have the answer with the units, and I box my answer. So this is the kind of problem solving technique I want you to use. And I think that's enough. I, I, this this lecture's gone on quite a while. Um, and I um, and I and actually we've covered quite a bit here. Um, let's let's just review what we did. Okay, we've got um, we reviewed a little bit about what energy was. Um, and then we developed formulas for work, for kinetic energy, for elastic potential energy, and for gravitational potential energy. Okay, and then I showed you how to solve problems using these formulas by using very good problem solving technique using given, find, and solve. So uh, now uh, you should be prepared to do some uh, really awesome energy problems. Good luck.